to another video here upon the only YouTube channel. And welcome back to another discography review. And this is the program where I take one of my favorite bands of all time and I review their whole discography. And of course today we are going to be looking at one of the greatest rock bands in history and that is Journey. Tons of great albums, tons of great different singers from different eras of the band. So it should be a pretty fun and interesting take on their whole discography. So with all the bullshit now the way, let's get straight into it. Of course, when you think of Journey, a lot of people automatically think of the Steve Perry albums throughout the late 70s and early 80s. But Journey, in fact, as we all know, has had a couple of different other singers besides Steve Perry. The first, of course, being the mighty Greg Raleigh. So Journey was started, I believe, after him and Neil Scon, long guitar player for the band, left Santana. And I'm going to be talking about each of these eras kind of at once, since, you know, there's multiple eras of the band. So with the Greg Raleigh era, we have three albums from the mid-1970s, and that is their self-titled album Journey, Look Into the Future, and Next. And these are probably my least favorite Journey albums. I don't think they're bad albums by any means, but this specific era of the band just isn't really personally for me. I do think Greg Raleigh is a good singer, but he's not my favorite that Journey has ever had or my favorite rock vocalist in general. Of course, there are tons and tons of talent on display, because as we all know, when you think of Journey, you think of the hard rock anthems and such. Lots of progressive elements on these first three albums. Lots of instrumentals throughout that definitely showcase the band's talents for sure. And I definitely appreciate all of that a lot. These are some of the shorter albums that Journey has ever had. Some of their albums later on started to feel a little bit too long, so it's nice to have these ones be a little short. And I do think these are good albums, like I said, and some I could probably listen to from time to time. Just not ones that are my absolute favorites from Journey and ones I'm going to seek out a whole lot. But out of this bunch, I think Next is the better album, and these three albums got better as they went along. Not a whole lot that stands out here other than really good performances throughout the albums, and those are pretty much my thoughts on the Greg Raleigh era. After Greg Raleigh, of course, Steve Perry came in. Greg Raleigh would remain in the band and sing on, on some songs up until the departure album, but we'll get into that when we get to that album. So overall, a good era, just not my absolute favorite from Journey. And now we move into the Steve Perry uh, era. I'm going to be talking about all these albums individually, and then later on we'll pick up talking about eras at once. Because Steve Perry era is my favorite Journey era, which goes for a lot of other people. And I have a lot of thoughts on each of the albums individually, as opposed to the last one, where pretty much the same thoughts. But the first album with Steve Perry is Infinity from 1978. And this might be my favorite Journey album, but it is definitely a close call with this and Frontiers. I love both of these albums. And this song, or not this song, this album is definitely the perfect length at 10 songs. Like I said, a lot of the albums later on started to feel too long. This is definitely the perfect length right here. This album has my all-time favorite Journey song, which is Lights. I love the vocal performance from Steve Perry on that song. And you have other great songs like Feeling That Way, Anytime, Wheel in the Sky. Greg Riley sings on a couple, which are pretty nice. Definitely like the little bit of variety of vocals, although Steve Perry does handle most of the vocal work. Of course, Neil Scott sounds great on guitar on this album, just like the rest. Just overall, this is a very awesome record that I always love listening to and have a blast every time it comes on. And now we move into Evolution. Out of the Steve Perry albums, this is definitely one of the most underrated ones for sure. Because a lot of people look at Infinity, Departure, Escape, and Frontiers. Not a whole lot of people look at Evolution. Maybe because it doesn't have a Don't Stop Believing or Separate Ways on here. But it has tons of great songs throughout. You have Love and Touch and Squeeze, and which was a big hit. And just an awesome, awesome song. Sweet and Simple is a great song. Too Late, City of Angels, just the same way. All 11 songs, in my opinion, are pretty good. Definitely started to get a little bit longer of an album, one more song, but doesn't feel too long at all. I think all 11 songs are pretty great and flow together nicely on this album. Of course, Steve Perry sounds great on here. The band just sounds great. Just overall, another awesome album and a great follow-up to Infinity. I don't think I like it as much as Infinity, but still a classic Journey album in my mind and another great entry in their discography. And now we move to Departure from 1980. Out of the four albums that came out in the 80s, this would be my second uh, to least favorite. My least favorite would probably be Raised on Radio. 
This one is just a little bit higher than Raised in Radio because it has some awesome songs on here, like Any Way You Want It, Stay A While, Someday Soon, Walks Like a Lady, People and Places, lots of great songs on here. This is when they started doing the 14 song album thing. So this album does feel a lot longer than Raised on Radio. But this album is saved by some awesome classics from the band that I like it just a little bit more than Raised on Radio. But like I said, this does feel a little bit too long in some places. And perhaps some of the songs can drag a little bit. Because I don't really care to listen to a 14 song Journey album. I'm much happier listening to a 10 song album from Journey. But it is what it is. A lot of people like these albums. I like this one a lot. Just feels a little bit too long for me. This was the last album with Greg Raleigh in the band. You know, sad to see him go. But I like some of the other band members just a little bit more than I do Greg Raleigh. So not just too, too sad for me. But overall, I would say Departure is a good album. But, you know, one of my least favorites from the 1980s. But that's perfectly all right because they have some other awesome albums, which we will get to pretty shortly. And now we move to their biggest album, which is Escape from 1981. And of course, we all know this has Don't Stop Believing on here, which is one of the most overplayed songs for sure, and one of my least favorite Journey songs, but I do acknowledge it is a very well-written tune, just a little bit overplayed. They went back down to 10-song album, which is awesome, because their 10-song albums flow together very, very nicely. And you know, besides Don't Stop Believing, you have other big hits from the band, like Open Arms, Who's Crying Now?, Still They Ride, Escape, and my personal favorite song off of this album, Stone in Low. Love the guitar playing in that song. I just think this album is fantastic start to finish, despite me not caring for Don't Stop Believing and a couple of the other deeper cuts off of here. Just an awesome, awesome record and sold millions and millions of copies for very good reason because it is that good. So Escape, those are my thoughts on that one. The more I think of it, I think Frontiers from 1983 is probably my favorite Journey album. You know, they took a little bit of a break, skipped 1982, went to 1983 with this one, and they did go back to the 14 song album thing, but I think what makes this album my favorite Journey album is Side One. Because Side One is just great song after another, just in a row. Because you have Separate Way, Center My Love, Faithfully, one of the best Journey ballads, Edge of the Blade, Chain Reaction, just every song off of the first half of the album is just awesome. I do like the later songs off the album to some extent, but I don't really feel like they're as good as Side One, if that makes any sense. It does feel a little bit too long, but not as long as Departure and some of their later albums do. I think Frontiers is fantastic, you know, start to finish overall, even though with me thinking it drags a little bit. And the more I think about it is my favorite Journey album, but definitely close with Infinity, Evolution, and Escape. Those would definitely be my four favorite Journey albums and are classics in my mind. So Frontiers, another great album. My thoughts on that one. And now we have the last Journey album for a long while, and that is Raised on Radio. Probably the least looked at album out of the Steve Perry era, besides the next one we're going to be talking about. Although a lot of people, like I said, don't look at Evolution as much as some of the others. But I do think Raised on, Raised on Radio is still a fantastic album with some great songs like Positive Touch, Girl Can't Help It, Be Good to Yourself, Suzanne. Lots of really good tunes throughout Raised on Radio. I believe there's 13 songs on here, so one less than the Frontiers, or maybe it's 11. I'll have to go back and look at it. But overall, I do think Raised on Radio is a good album start to finish and one that I had a lot of fun. But probably my least favorite out of the Steve Perry era. Well, definitely within my two least favorites. We'll get to the next one pretty shortly. But Raised on Radio, overall, pretty good album. And now we move to Trial by Fire. This came out a decade later from Raised on Radio in 1996, I believe. And this is one of the longest Journey albums at 16 songs. So this one definitely drags a lot. And is a big reason why this is one of the least favorite Steve Perry albums and one of my least favorite Steve Perry albums from the band. Probably my least favorite, but I still think it is a good record because a lot of these albums that feel a little bit too long, I still think are pretty good albums. They just drag a little bit for me and I prefer, prefer some of these shorter ones like Infinity and Escape just a little bit more. But some of the standouts on here are When You Love a Woman, If He Should Break Your Heart, Still She Cries, and When I Think of You. Obviously, a lot of love songs and Journey's discography, but they are all pretty wicked. 
This is the last album with Steve Perry, which is perfectly fine by me because we've had enough albums by him. A lot of people think Journey pretty much ended with this or Race on Radio or something when Steve Perry was out of the band. Because for a lot of people, you can't have Journey without Steve Perry, but I disagree because I think there are tons of great singers to come from shortly in their discography and the band as a whole. So ending the Steve Perry era with Trial by Fire, all these albums throughout this era are really, really solid in my opinion. Some I obviously like more than others, but I give positive reviews to all of these Steve Perry albums. So let's move on to the next era. So after Steve Perry was out of the band, they got another Steve to join the band. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, Steve Augeri, is the, if that's how you pronounce it, but maybe I'll have his name up here. Die Hard Journey fans, of course, know how to pronounce his name, but for whatever reason, I don't. But this guy only sang with two albums for the band, and those are Arrival and Generations. Arrival, I think, is a really good comeback album from after the Steve Perry era. Not my favorite Journey album post Steve Perry or my favorite era, but I do think this new Steve is a pretty good singer and does a good job replacing Steve Perry. You have great songs like All the Holy, Higher Place, With Your Love, Loved by You. Lots of great songs on Arrival. Like I said, not one of my favorites post Steve Perry, but definitely a good album I give a positive review to. Then you have Generations, and for some reason the band have pretty much disowned this album because this was the only album by them that is not on Spotify. And I believe it's not on any other streaming service. So I had to pull up to YouTube to listen to this album. And after listening to this album, I really don't get why they disown this album and don't have it on Spotify or any other streaming service. Because I think it's a pretty good album with some good songs like Faith in the Heartland, A Better Place, Believe, Every Generation. I think this is a little bit better than Arrival in my personal opinion and is a pretty good album start to finish. So I really don't get why they have uh, disowned it. But looking at the comment section of some of these songs, I see a lot of people definitely agree with me. Of course, a lot of people disagree because they like the Steve Perry era so much. I do too. It's my favorite era. But you can have Journey without him, in my personal opinion. But capping this era off with Generations and Arrival, really good albums, good comeback albums after the most popular era of the band. I don't know exactly why this Steve guy was out of the band next, but we would have another great singer for the remainder of Journey's uh, discography. So there are three more Journey albums, and all of them have the same vocalist, Arnel Panetta, or Panita, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name, but he is easily my second favorite vocalist from Journey under Steve Perry. I think all three of these albums are pretty fantastic, and they are Revelation, Eclipse, and Freedom from last year, 2022. Starting with Revelation is probably my least favorite uh, album from this era, and a big part of it, it is way too long. Pretty much there are two discs to this album. The first disc is fantastic with some great songs like Never Walk Away, After All These Years, Where Did I Lose Your Love, Turn Down the World Tonight, lots of really good tunes. But this too is a bunch of re-recordings of some of their classic songs, you know, like Don't Stop Believing in Lights and etc, etc. They're not bad re-recordings by any means. But why would you go with all the trouble to re-record them when you have the originals to listen to? It really makes no sense to me at all why you would do it. And I'm never going to listen to disc two of this album. I'm just going to go listen to the classic albums instead of doing that. So that's the biggest complaint for this album and why it is, uh, you know, my least favorite of it. But even if you took the disc two away, it probably still would be my least favorite. Because I do like Eclipse and Freedom just a little bit more. Eclipse, I think, is a better album than Revelation, and Freedom is a better album than Eclipse, so it definitely gets better as it goes along. My biggest complaint with all these later albums, though, is they are way, way too long. Some of them have 16 songs, some 15, some 14. I think they could all be shortened down to a 10-song album, or maybe even potentially an 8-song album, and it will be a lot better. But Eclipse, I do think, is a really awesome album. I like the first half of this album a lot more than the second half, for sure with some good songs like Edge of the Moment, Chain of Love, She's a Mystery, and City of Hope. I think all of those are good songs, just like the rest of the album, I do think has some awesome, awesome tunes. And of course, Freedom is probably my favorite post-Steve Perry album, in my opinion. Um, may, may not be the best objectively, but definitely my personal favorite for sure. I think all of the singles released up until this album release were fantastic and are probably my favorites off the album. And those include Let It Rain, The Way We Used To Be, Don't Give Up On Us, and You Got The Best Of Me. 
really like all those songs, but I do like the album is consistent start to finish, with the exception of a couple tracks that make it a little bit longer. So overall, I think the RML era is a pretty, pretty solid, and my second favorite era under Steve Perry. But I do think the next Steve, Steve or Gary, would be my third favorite, and Greg Raleigh would be my least favorite era of the band. So ending the last era of Journey with Revelation, Eclipse, and Freedom, three more albums I would give positive reviews to, and very good examples that you can have a Journey without Steve Perry for sure. So let's move on to my final thoughts. So those are going to be my whole thoughts on Journey's discography. Obviously a band I really like and tons of albums I really like. I listen to all the albums for the most part occasionally with the exception of the first three albums, the Greg Raleigh era. But of course, you know, the Steve Perry era is my favorite era with some great albums and I like a lot of the later albums a lot. So you know, great bands and great discography. If you're a big fan of Journey like I am, be sure to give me your thoughts on their discography down in the comments below. I would be very interested to hear all of y'all's thoughts on this band, and I'm sure all of you Journey fans watching have very different takes on their discography, so I would love to see yours. And if you enjoyed this discography review here upon the old YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Got a lot more wicked shit coming up on here as well over yonder on my Instagram. I highly appreciate a follower over there, and I highly appreciate the support from all of y'all. So, once you're done watching, blast some journey to make your day a wicked one, and then go out and kick some ass.